Good evening. Here is the world news from BGI TV, Baba Bagide Imo TV. I am your street for you, Mohiri Rabida Alaba. Today, the 28th day in the month of February 2022. First are the major headlines for the world news. FG not showing seriousness to negotiate ASU. Cold killings for Shonu vows to arrest perpetrators. Drug business court declines out of Hiari's bill application. Concerning the peace talk, Ukraine list demands once Russian soldiers withdrawn. Discrimination at Ukraine Polish border plain Africans lament. UNESCO halts environmental monitoring inspection of Russia's Lake Baika and Spot Stirring. Falcons cash in on overseas bond stars. The news in detail. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has accused the federal government of showing levity in its ongoing negotiation with the union, whose members are currently on a four week warning strike. The union, therefore, said ending the industrial action was dependent on the readiness of the government to take the issue at stake seriously and do the needful. National President of ASU, Professor Emmanuel Oshodike, told Berger yesterday that the last meeting between the two sides did not achieve anything because the government team acted as if it did not know the issues at stake. Our last meeting did not lead to anything meaningful because the government team acted as if they were not aware of the issues at stake. We have been on this team for some years now. What we expected from them is to come to the meeting with answers to what we are demanding. We were surprised that their team came with no action as to how to resolve the issues. Another meeting is slated for Tuesday and we hope they will change and do the need for. Asked whether the next meeting will resolve the face-off or should the case said government's action and readiness will determine that. He added that the demands of the union were still the same, including revitalizing university's education, the continuance of integrated personnel payroll information system, IBBIS, and the payment system is the university's payment of promotion and salary arrears, among others. Bangladesh, however, discovered that the two major areas of this agreement were the IBPIS, that the lecturers want to be replaced with the University Transparency and Accountability System, UTS, an adequate funding of the sector. On the call for more money to be pumped into the sector, the government is claiming that it was currently having paucity of funds, a claim the union said could be tackled by the government setting its priority rights. If the two sides fail to resolve the office off by March 13, this year, the union may go on indefinite strike. Moving forward to the next story concerning the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abu Kiari. A federal high court, Abuja, on Monday refused to grant the bail application of suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abu Kiari. Justice Inyang Epo, in a ruling, said the application had been overtaken by events following an order of the sister court granting the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency's prayers to detain Kiali for another 14 days to enable it to conclude its investigation. Justice Echo held that the sister court which gave the order in favor of NBLEA on February 27 was a court of coordinate jurisdiction. The judge, however, said he was inclined to hear Kiali's fundamental enforcement rights suits with the urgency it deserved after the expiration of the 14-day court order. He then adjourned until March 15 to hear Habu Kiyari's application to demand his fundamental right enforcement. The news agency of Nigeria report that Justice Zainab Abu Bakar of FHC, sitting in Abuja, had granted the agency's application to have Kiyari and other suspect linked to the alleged drug trafficking detained for more 14 days to complete its investigation. And to the next story from Osho State. Osho State Government has promised to spare no effort in arresting people who sponsor youth in the state to foment trouble. The warning was a sequel to recent instances of calls related violence in Elisha and other towns. The government, in a statement signed by the Commissioner for Information and Civic Orientation, Funke Ebemode, on Sunday described the incident as criminal and dastardly. It, however, assured residents that the various security agencies of the state are working together to apprehend the perpetrators and deal with them according to the law. The statement read in part, the current spate of killings in Elisha and Eden are cold-related, and the security architecture of the state has briefed the governor. 
But as the security strategies are not interested to be disclosed in the media, the government cannot disclose details of what its operatives are doing. We can only assure citizens and residents of Oshu that everything is being done and will continue to be done within the ambit of the law to apprehend those who are arming young people to foment trouble in the state. Intelligence reports also show that those funding these activities are the reason the courts are embodied. In Oshu, nobody who runs foul of the law will be spared. A criminal is a criminal, where old or young, poor or highly placed. From that story, we'll go straight to another information coming from the Ukrainian invasion by Russia from United Nations. UNESCO decided to withdraw its envoy, P. Sunana Kari, from the Russian region of East Coast, those aborting an environmental monitoring mission of Lake Baikal. Lake Baikal is a world heritage site, the Russian Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment said on Monday. The joint monitoring mission of UNESCO and the International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, is cancelled. The international experts who arrive at Airsquark region would leave the region in the coming days. But before leaving, Susanna Akari would nevertheless visit the World Heritage Site and discuss the key issues with the Russian delegation. However, this consultation will be held out of the mission, the ministry said. The mission on the assessment of negative environmental repercussions for Lake Baikal was scheduled to take place from February 28th to March 5th. It was supposed to submit the inspection result of the 45th UNESCO meeting, scheduled for June 2022 in the Russian city of Kazan. It came as Russia launched a military operation in Ukraine on February 24th. From that story to the next one, As the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues to its fifth day, Africans fleeing the war said they face racism and discrimination at the Ukrainian-Polish border, the news agency of Nigeria reports. Some fleeing Africans reportedly said that officials at the border prevented them from entering into Poland for several days while white refugees were let into the country. These developments sparked outrage among social media users as a video of the alleged discrimination went viral. Ukraine is a destination for thousands of young African students, including Nigeria, owing to its high standard of education and low cost. Nan reported that the Nigerian Foreign Minister, Yofri Oyema, has called on his Ukrainian counterpart to clarify the situation, expressing concern at the news, especially as it affected Nigerian citizens, and promised to investigate the matter. The Ukrainian Foreign Minister, Dimitro Koleba, as I have stated that Ukrainian border guards are being instructed to allow all foreigners to leave. While the South African Foreign Minister, Klesin Moniela, also tweeted on Sunday that South African students and other Africans trying to flee Ukraine were not treated fairly at the border between Ukraine and Poland, Ghanaian Foreign Minister Shelly Ayoko Bochwe, in a statement released on Monday, said that students from Ghana had not had any problems leaving the country, Nan reports. Polish officials have denied the allegations. So the next, if Ukraine demanded an immediate Russian ceasefire and troop withdrawal on Monday as a Kiev delegation arrived for talks with Russian negotiators on the fifth day of the Kremlin's offensive against the country, he also demanded an immediate European Union membership for Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine on Thursday, sending show shock waves around the world. Ukraine forces backed by Western arms have managed to slow the advance of the Russian army. The Ukrainian military also accused Russia of launching a missile strike on residential buildings in the cities of Zyptomri and Chenix, cities, cities in the countries northwest and north. In a statement ahead of a peace talk on Monday, the Ukrainian presidency said the Ukrainian delegation arrived at the Ukrainian-Belarusian border to take part in talks with representative of Russia Federation. The key issue of the talks is an immediate ceasefire and the withdrawal of troops from Ukraine. Zelensky urged Russian soldiers to lay down their weapons and desert as Ukrainian and Russian delegations were set to hold talks on Moscow's invasion. And to another story coming from Russia, over the weekend, Western countries initiated new sanctions against Russia in connection with the Russian operation in Ukraine. 
European Union banned any Russian aircraft from London taking off or flying over the territory of EU. Russia, as a response to a ban, the European state placed on the operation of flights of Russian aircraft has limited the operation of flight via the airlines of 36 states, the Federal Air Transport Agency said. In accordance with the norms of international law, as a response to the ban of European states on the operations of flights of civil aircraft operated by Russia, air carriers and all registered in Russia, a restriction has been introduced on the operation of flights by the air carriers of 36 states, the message says. You are watching the world news from BGI TV. But before we go, let's quickly have the sports story. The Super Falcons last Wednesday defeated Ivory Coast 3 0 on aggregate to qualify for the Women's Africa Cup of Nations. More than the result, the performance of England born Ashley Pontre caught the attention of Nigerians with the Leicester City defender who has a Nigerian father turning a distant fan's favorite. No fewer than seven overseas born players of Nigerian descent and those who hold dual citizenship were invited for the clash as the country beat the Lady Elephant to ensure. Nigeria's twelfth appearance at the Wafcon. On Sport Extra takes a look at some of his players who don't their countries of birth for Nigeria, the land of the parents at full international level. Ashley Plumtre, Esther Okorunko, Michelle Alozier, and the Payne sisters have represented the United States at under 17, under 19 levels. Nicole, 21, followed in the footsteps of her sister, choosing to represent Nigeria at senior level. She was also part of the foreign legion that made our debut for the country in a friendly game defeat to Jamaica. If Yoma or Numanu, or Numanu represented the United States under 23 women's team before she received her first call up to the Falcons in 2021. Without more thought, the 28 years old accepted the offer from the Nigerian Football Federation and has made an instant impact, scoring two goals from three appearances. The fifth 10 forward currently plays for Gotham FC in National Women's Soccer League and has scored seven goals in 20 games this season. Patricia George. George was born to a Nigerian father and a Venezuelan mother and was raised in Chicago, Illinois, where she was born. Eligible to play for the United States, Venezuela, or Nigeria, George closed to play for her father's country and made a senior debut February 18, 2021. Our second half substitute against Russian club CSK Moscow at that year's edition of the Turkish Women's Cup, Adekite Fatuga Dada and Juliet Adebawane Arimoro. These are the players that turned down their country bets to represent Nigeria in higher international level. Let's quickly have a recap of the headlines of the world news. FG not showing seriousness to negotiate ASU. We also brought to you court killings or show vows to arrest perpetrators. Drug business, court declines, Abakiari's bail application. We also brought to you peace talk. Ukraine list demands, wants Russian soldiers withdrawn. Discrimination at Ukrainian Polish border, fleeing Africans lament. We also brought to you UNESCO Alt Environmental Monitoring Inspection of Russia's Lake Baker. And last foreign story Russia restricts flights of airlines of 36 countries in response to bans on air arrival. And last story, Falcons cash in on overseas bond stars. Thank you for watching. Our YouTube channel, the handle is Baba Vanide Imo TV. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell and accept the option all to access our broadcast. On Facebook, Vanide Imo with Alami and Debayo. Please like and follow the page for more updates. On Instagram, Vanide Imo underscore 22. For other placement of the goods and services, coverage of events and function, the phone number streaming on your screen is a direct line to dial strictly for advert placement. Thank you for watching. I am Moriri Rabila Lawa. Good evening.